Houston, one and done every year that you played. You know how they broke through to make the conference finals? I don't know, but I know you were out that year. Then they didn't have another playoff run till they traded you. In Good the- afternoon, YouTube. Studio B21 back with another reaction video. Now, Nino. Yes. The NBA playoffs are heating up. Yeah, I've got to love the playoffs. Oh, you what got to love them. Yeah. Raptors aren't in it this year, unfortunately. Uh, it's good to see some what? former Raptors uh, going yeah. farther in this playoff season. Shout out OG Ananobi on the Knicks. Oh, amazing. One of my favorite players That ever. dunk on Embiid in their in their last game. What an amazing defensive force. And it just happened to be on Embiid, which just makes it all oh. that better. Oh, all the and better. Kyle. See you, Kyle. Oh, God. You uh, chose the wrong side, Kyle. But yeah. But also, shout out Pascal Siakam. Spicy P. Spicy. With Tyrese Halliburton over on the Indiana Pacers, who I did not see coming this year. Yeah. I did not see them what doing this great, well at all. A great improvement for them. I'm, I'm yeah. really glad that Siakam got out of whatever was going on in Toronto. It's he a good has, situation for him. I'm like that both of them have a legitimate chance of actually getting another ring. Yes. One Either could we... say without Kawhi, those two were the other cores well, yeah, in the yeah. seat in the regular season. OG was out for the playoffs during our playoff we, run. We had a better record with him out of the lineup than with Kawhi within the lineup. Yeah, percentage wise. So when they always say that Kawhi was the difference or he carried the team, they're right in a way, but they're also not. How's the Clippers doing, by the way? Oof, that's a low blow. Okay. But that's what we're we're not going to focus on that today. How's Pascal doing? Now? How would the how the series go with the? Pascal? You know what? He just beat a team that has a a guy on it who's very famous for uh, saying that there are no dogs in Toronto. <laughs> we have dogs. I have a puppy. I mean, there you go in Toronto and on the court, and they're not scared of facing them. No. When no, you just got your ass kicked. By one of our former players. You know, the, there's some dogs in... Uh, Apparently, the dogs are in Indiana. But, uh... Hey, Patrick Beverly, what's going on with you right now, buddy? You good? You, you good? good? Uh, to her credit, Melinda Adams, who was the reporter in question, tweeted this this morning. I want to thank everyone for their kind words and support. I am humbled. Patrick Beverly just called me and apologized. I appreciate it, and I accept it. The Bucks also reached out to apologize. I've been in the news for over 40 years, and kindness and grace always win. Brew your reaction. It's just terrible on Patrick Beverly's behalf. I mean, it, it was just, first of all, and what you didn't see, you mentioned he threw it into the crowd twice. He first kind of lobbed the ball into the crowd, and it hit a woman in the face. She's not Ooh. looking, just surprisingly hits her in the face. Thankfully, he didn't throw it as hard as he did this time. And where he fired it. And there's a little girl there that was in the line of fire. He missed her, thankfully, but he could have easily hit her. Uh, and then what he did to the reporter, I mean, that was just straight bullying. I'm not going to jump on any of the reporters, but I, I wish they all would have walked away in support of. You think about this one, buddy. Okay, the whole reporter thing, it's like, that's not the first time it happened. But the whole throwing the ball. Twice into the crowd, like I understand one time, some frustration. You draw the that the second time where he he whipped it. Oh yeah, and there's a little girl there. That's unacceptable. I mean, I get it. The crowd with the guy in the crowd was apparently yelling one, two, three, Cancun. Oh God, it's true. It was, but that doesn't give you the right no to whip the ball no. back into the crowd twice. At the end of the day, it's a business. And you are a product, and you can't assault people. And it's it's assault. You're whipping a ball. At an old lady's face. It's like, you're a big grown man. You know? Or at least that's what you'd like to say. Now, all that stuff that Broussard says isn't really that interesting. What I want to show you is this. Anything that happened last night. From when you got to Houston, I was there, you were thrilled to be in the league. Happiest guy in the world, hanging out at Onyx at 3 in the morning with your ridiculous fake chains because you couldn't get into dreams yet. I understand I was in... Fake chains because you couldn't get into dreams yet. Burn. Wow. 
And that's only the first five seconds. <laughs> Good lord. Similar spot, buddy. And you went from that to whatever you've become, a delusional, cheap shot artist, misogynistic clown, promoting your podcast at the expense of your career, which to its credit, let me check, while still behind Andy Roddick's tennis podcast and your own teammates pod, you are ahead of Bear, Bear Grease by Clay Newcomb. So good luck with it. So how did you get here? And how did Pat Bev become a guy that we talk about despite the basketball reference page? A creation of your own delusion in Houston, one and done every year that you played. You know how they broke through to make the conference finals? I don't know, but I know you were out that year. Then they didn't have another playoff run till they traded you and then promptly made another conference finals. So what happened then? You went to the Clippers and you beat Kevin Durant in a basketball game and talked about it. And then he promptly dropped 50 on you and reminded everyone who he was and who you were. That offseason, you then declared to anyone who would listen, the next five years are mine. Steph Curry's had his time. By the way, those five years ended literally last night. It's been five years since then. How did that go, those five years? Well, the first year, what happened in the bubble? You started the bubble by disrespecting Michelle Roberts in front of your colleagues, and they had to talk you down from it. You ended the bubble by being a key part of the biggest gag job in the last 30 years in the NBA. What did you do the next season? The next year, Ty Lue's big adjustment, the one time the Clippers were going on a playoff run. You remember what it was? Sitting your ass on the bench. That's what turned that playoff run around. How did that playoff run end? Oh, yeah. With Chris Paul having the best game of his life on you and you dealing with it by shoving a man in the back when he wasn't looking and then going on TV and calling a legend of the game a cone. What then happened after that? 2022, you won your championship, unfortunately. Now, I will say that Chris Paul, legend, eh, veteran, he's, yes. He's a Hall of Famer. In the same way that, would you say, Kyle Lowry's a Hall of Famer without the ring? For longevity, would you say? Or would that be, would, is that Chris Paul's Hall of Fame? For longevity? Chris Paul doesn't have a ring. Exactly. But he's still a Hall of Famer. For what he's done for the for the sport, I'd put him in the Hall of Fame. You mean cutting that massive weed with a massive three down to 42 points? Yeah, obviously. Exactly what I mean. <laughs> it was a play-in game, and you celebrated like it was. And then 2023 to 2024... You have been on the Jazz, the Lakers, the Magic, the Bulls, the Sixers, and the Bucks, and not a single one of them wanted to keep you around. And you ended that tenure by throwing a basketball at a woman's head, getting it back, throwing it at another fan, and then yelling at another woman in the locker room because she doesn't listen to your terrible podcast. So if, if this was your last moment in the league, good riddance. Won't be missed, won't be memorable. I mean, congrats for creating something out of thin air like the Wizard of Oz that never should have existed to where you're a guy that's talked about, but unnecessary from start to finish, pal. Mm. Well, so I did like when he did the too small on LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say this. You're thinking about it. We're talking about it. I know. Unfortunate as it is, we are talking about it. You know. I would say it almost reminds me of uh, there's a children's book something forget the kid's name and the no good very bad terrible day mm. it seems like Patrick Beverly's NBA career has been just one big bad terrible day well he won that play in and he took off his shirt and threw it into the crowd in Minnesota started, by the way started crying like you know he was crowned the prom queen you know, it's like, well, you just got into the tournament. By the skin of your teeth. You know, and it's like, there are no dogs in Toronto, and it's like. I think you need to start big dogging up yourself, though. Um, I mean. Master of self-promotion, though. Good Lord. Good Lord. He's like, buddy was exactly right. It's like, why are we even talking about this guy? What has this guy done? Because it's the same reason we're talking about it, Nino. It generates the clicks.
And that's what the media needs. And that's what we need. Yeah. We need you to click and subscribe. Click, subscribe, comment down below. You know, they, who else do you love to hate? You know, basketball, you know, Marshawn. Marshawn from the Louis, from know, Louis perspective. Pasternak. Like, you know, it's like, you love him if you're, he's on your team. Hate him if he's not, you know. That is a very good quote that has been said about Patrick Beverly, I will admit. Would I ever want to see him on the Raptors? No. no I think he would probably retire before that happens. Yeah. Like he would force himself out. People. So, in, in conclusion, I might have one solution for you, Patrick Beverly, where you can still play basketball and promote your podcast. The only problem is you might be doing it in Chinese, buddy. Ni hao. Ni hao, buddy. Ni hao. Have a great day, guys.